What's the word, y'all? We gotta talk about the Portland Trailblazers because there's a lot of drama going on within the organization. And I'm not even a Trailblazer fan, and I'm frustrated, so I can't even imagine being a fan of this organization. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. These are all my personal NBA opinions. If you disagree, that's completely okay. Let's go ahead and talk about the Blazers. So it starts off with Neil O'Shea um, getting investigated for misconduct. He gets canned on Friday, good, he's bad at his job, and every report that's coming out about this misconduct, he has no place to be in an NBA organization. He's gone. This morning, I wake up to multiple reports, one of them saying that Damian Lillard wouldn't mind playing with uh, Ben Simmons in Portland. We'll talk about that. But the one that's more important has to do with the tension between Damian Lillard slash the roster and new head coach Chauncey Billups. In the recent weeks, sources say Lillard has grown frustrated with the team's play and tension appears to be on the rise between the players and Billups. Lillard made it clear during the coaching search that he preferred a head coach who had done the job before. And if I'm not mistaken, Chauncey Billups had been an assistant coach for like a year, maybe two, and he immediately gets the head coaching job with the Blazers. Now, Dame did go onto Twitter and basically call Cap. Uh, but there are a lot of crumbs in the past couple weeks that might indicate that this is true. I'm going to read you some more quotes, and you can interpret it as you may, and I'll give you my interpretation. So they lost the bad game a few nights ago, and Chauncey Billups went to his post-game podium and said two different things that, that stand out to me. I've never seen a team that needs its bench to inspire our starters. This stuff is crazy to me. It's supposed to be the other way around. That's quote number one. Now, this is quote number two. Lack of pride, of course, that bothers me. If it doesn't bother you, there's something going on. Sometimes it's just not your night. Cool, it happens. There's a way I'm willing to lose, and there's a way I'm not willing to lose. It was embarrassing. Now, you can interpret that as Chauncey Billups as a head coach trying to hold his players accountable accountable by talking to the media, or you can um, interpret it as, hey, he's lost the locker room, so he's going to talk to the media about what he's thinking because the players aren't listening. And all of this is just so very wild to me. Look back on all of the videos we've made about the Portland Trailblazers in just the last calendar year, because I think most majority of NBA fans kind of see what the heck is happening with the Blazers and kind of saw that Damian Lillard might have been on his path out. And even he kind of entertained the idea where he was basically saying that he don't know what his future looks like in Portland. He's having meetings with Anthony Davis and LeBron James in the offseason, and somehow that's not tampering, but they're having these meetings, and he comes out and said, hey, I want to pull off what Giannis did, which is admirable. But the majority of us fans saw this and was like, hey, Dame should probably move on to his next team because he's, he's crying for help. And nobody is listening. Now, every time I talk about the Portland Trailblazers on this channel, there's a bulk of Trailblazer fans that come at me, can you wrong, can you wrong, and look at everything I've said about this that led us to this point and tell me I've been wrong about everything. Neil Loche, I mentioned plenty of times before, he was not good at his job. Damian Lillard went into the podium this offseason and was like, hey, I talked about it with my family and everything, and I want to stay in Portland. Everybody's like, whew, all the Blazers fans sigh of relief. But this is what he said. I do want to see change within the organization. And what did Neil O'Shea do? Hey, you know Larry, Larry Nance Jr., a good role player? That's the change. Let's go roll out the same roster. We're going to fire Terry Stotts and put this inexperienced guy there. What, what sense does that make? You have this superstar player who is crying out for help, and he wants to stay loyal to the city, and you have done nothing, nothing to improve his odds on winning a championship. And the one change that you did do the, the Chauncey Billups thing, we're quarter to the season. There's already reports about the locker room not liking him or not liking his scheme. And I've watched a ton of Trailblazer games this season. You hired Chauncey Billups because he had this defensive scheme, this and that, to improve the defense, you're still dead last. When I watch these games, there's a specific clip that I saw somebody tweet. Somebody tweeted a clip where they were double doubling Donovan, uh, Davion Mitchell at the three-point line. Davion Mitchell shooting like 20% from three. And what happened on that possession? Davion Mitchell found an open man. The schemes are not working early on, and nothing indicates that things will be better. And the one thing that had been the pillar of consistency for you, which is Damian Lillard, he's having a down season, and because of that, you aren't the team that you normally are. Look at that team. I've preached it for years. A team of Damon CJ as your point of attack, guys, is not going to ever defend. It just won't. Especially when you don't have another dude that might take the pressure off. Roko's an okay defender. He'd always been a dude that was known for his defense. This season, he ain't been doing nothing. Yusuf Nurkic might be an average defender at the center position. Norman Powell's running a small four position. Of course, his wingspan is great, but he's 6'3". They don't have a dude that you can look at and say, we need you to defend the other best players in the league. And because of that, the other best players in the league be having big old nights. And then the role players have big old nights because now you go to the scheme where you're doubling everything and now it's an open man. I don't understand how the heck we got to this point. It seems so very simple. It seems so very simple. Get Damian Lillard some defenders. 
You have not done that. You've, I guess you've tried with the Roco thing, but you haven't done anything more than that. Now, I don't want this all to be about Chauncey Billups because he's 20 games into his first season as a head coach. Um, I, I think that maybe some of his schemes could work if he had the right person. Now, remember, he's still starting a team or has a team with really no real great defenders. So it, it's hard. I think, yeah, it will be hard to elevate this team to be a good defensive team based on the personnel, right? But you have a star player in Damian Lillard who was very open about the people that he wanted. Now, I, I don't think that Dame should be running the whole organization to decide, I want to trade for this player and I want this as my head coach. But I think that he should have some type of say, especially when in the offseason, it was a real question what the hell he was going to ask to do, right? So when he tells you he wants these two coaches in that point, it was Jason Kidd and Mike D'Antoni. Would they be better in this place? I don't know, but at least they have the experience. The second report was talking about Dame wanting to play with Ben Simmons in Portland. This is hard for me to gauge because... It's hard for me to decide what the heck is going to happen because Daryl Morey and Elton Brandon have made it very clear they're holding Ben Simmons for as long as they can until they get the superstar player. They're still looking at James Harden. They're still looking at Dame. They're still looking at Bradley Beal waiting for one of them to become available. And they said that they're not trying to settle for anything less unless you throw in a CJ three first round picks and three pick swaps, which is too much. I don't know in this hypothetical negotiation who has the leverage anymore. You can argue that the 76ers have the leverage because Dame has made it very obvious or made it vocalized that he wants to play with Ben Simmons. Or you can say that the Trailblazers have leverage because the 76ers aren't playing Ben Simmons and they haven't looked amazing so far. I mean, they were 8-3 before, before Joel got sick. But you get what I'm saying. Who has the leverage? I don't really know. What is the perfect trade to get Ben in Portland without giving up Dame? I don't know. I don't know if that exists. And I've seen a lot of... A lot of Philadelphia 76ers fans see in the package that is CJ, Robert Covington, and maybe a pick or whatever it may be. I'm not, I'm not a guy that's in the front office, so take it with a grain of salt. I don't, I don't understand. But I see a lot of people see that trade and be like, no, nah, we don't do that deal because we want a superstar player. And this is what I believe. I don't think you're trading Ben Simmons away for a superstar player that's one piece away to make y'all a championship, championship team. I think you trade Ben Simmons for maybe it is a CJ McCollum who's a borderline all-star. He's having an amazing individual season. And then you make the other moves to elevate y'all to a championship team. I don't know if that singular one for Ben Simmons plus yada yada for James, for, for Damian, for Bradley Beal is ever going to come available. So maybe it is okay to settle for a CJ and let CJ be the focal point of the offense late in the game because that's what y'all really need with Joel out there. Somebody that can get Joel involved. Without Damian Lillard in those games where Damian Lillard don't play, CJ be averaging like six assists per game. He's not a true point guard. You still have Tyrese Maxey for that, but he's a dude that could get you a bucket. So again, I, if I was the 76ers, I would see CJ McCollum and maybe Robert Covington coming back to Philly and like that trade. But again, I'm not the guy in the front office, so what do I know? But having Damian Lillard play with with Ben Simmons on that side would be a I think a really good match you would have to convince Ben Simmons to turn into a Draymond Green type player where you might not be the guy bringing the ball up the court every single possession like you were in your previous stops but you can find your offense in the flow of the offense still be a playmaker in the half court and play amazing defense I, I swear to you I think Ben Simmons for his career, if he just comes in and accepts his mindset, he can be a Draymond Green type player. Cerebrally, he is up there. He's a very smart NBA player, even though you see the clip of him passing up on a layup. That, that wasn't his brightest moment. But from the, the history that we have of Ben Simmons, he's a smart player. He's a great defender. He's a great passer. He could be a Draymond Green type player for our organization. I don't know, man. Trailblazer fans, let you let me know. Again, there's always a... A horde of Trailblazer fans that tweet at me after I make a video about them disagreeing with everything I say, which is okay. We're talking about sports. We're going to disagree. That's fine. But I, I, I legit, as a fan, is trying to get what's best for your organization. What's best right now is to try to make some things work. But with all that being said, I want to remind y'all to enjoy basketball, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.